need you to take your bulletins now on the inside, on the left-hand side. We want to talk about the first step. We're going to be talking about 10 characteristics of pandemic Christianity. We call it that because here is something that began around the year 33 AD, and within 30 years, it had made such a spread, such an impact, and went everywhere. When you look at the time covered in the first 300 years, literally Christianity had gone to the known world and literally just kind of taken over, gone everywhere. Now, what are some of the things that would make it work like that? Well, we begin in Acts chapter 1, and we see the following. We see that it was powered by God, but it was spread through people. Powered by God, but spread through people. A key verse in Acts chapter 1, verse 8, where it says, But you will receive power. When the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses telling people about me everywhere. In Jerusalem, throughout Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Jesus, in his last words to his disciples, as we find in the last four chapters of the Gospels, and the first part of this first chapter of Acts, basically had three instructions for them. And the instructions were the following, and write these down. The first one was, wait. Wait. The second one was, go. Wait. Go. And the third was, be my witnesses. Wait. Go. And be my witnesses. The first one was, wait. Because again, there was a period of transition. Things were changing there. They were going from one way that God was working with man to another way. Jesus had told them in the chapters of John, said, listen, it's better for you if I leave. Because once I leave, the Father is going to send you another helper like me but different. And he's going to be with you. He's going to be in you. He's going to give you power to do the things that I am sending you out to do. The disciples, these first apostles and the others around them, they had God's authority to do God's work through Jesus. You remember in Matthew chapter 28, verse 18, Jesus said, all authority has been given unto me. Now you go. It said a little earlier, or in the end of John, it said, as the Father has sent me, so send I you. But at the end of Luke, he said, now listen, you're going to go, and you're going to wait a little bit in Jerusalem. Don't go anywhere yet. Here's the big picture, but I need you to wait because in waiting, you're going to receive power. So they had the authority, but they needed to wait for God's power through the Holy Spirit to get the word accomplished, the work accomplished. And here's why. Good work can be done through human effort. Good work can be done through human effort. Let me tell you. There's a lot of people in this world doing some very good work. I have a friend of mine that I'm going to see in a couple days. And ever since we finished high school, which was 45 years ago, as Marcel always reminds me, you graduated the year I was born, 45 years ago. Uh, he went to John Hopkins, and from there to the present, he's been working literally around the world to help the development of countries. His post, the uh, two posts back was in Kabul, Afghanistan, working in the middle of all that to help people move ahead. The, the stuff that they do is amazing, and he's been all over the world, so the, the most God-forsaken places and some really cool places, but in every place do it. And there are some good people doing some good work 
You, you look at organizations like Doctors Without Borders and you say, they are doing some amazing work. I don't think I could do that. And I don't want you to ever think that the only people that can do good work are Christians because that is not true. There's a lot of good people that are doing a lot of good work with human effort. And they're shaping and helping the situation that men and women live in. But, and this is a big but, God's work can only be done through the power of, uh, cannot be accomplished apart from his leadership and power. God's work is different. God's work begins changing the condition of people, not the situation. We always say, well, if we can change their situation, things will get better. It won't change until they change the heart. That's a condition. When you change the condition of people, that begins to affect the situation that they're in. You can see entire families, entire towns, sometimes entire nations that have improved because their condition changed of their soul. You can't do that by human effort. We launch out and try to do something on our own, and it just will not happen. It's not by might. It's not by power, says the Lord, but by my what? Spirit. So if we want to do God's work, we have to do it with his leadership, with his power. Now, here's the good thing about it. This is a note, big note. The Holy Spirit has come. We don't have to sit around and wait anymore. The Holy Spirit has come. Every believer today is baptized and sealed by the Holy Spirit. We don't have to sit around and wait. Everything we need, we have if we know Jesus as our Savior. We have received him. In receiving him, the Bible says we have been sealed with the Spirit. We have been baptized with the Spirit. Now, every day we need to be filled with the Spirit. And that only happens when we start removing ourselves from the equation and letting the Holy Spirit take over the different areas of our life. That has to be done. But we don't have to wait. They had to wait. But you know what? They only had to wait 10 days. This was not a sit around and wait forever. This was wait. The Holy Spirit comes. And it took off. That's a wait. The second thing, once the wait was over, is go. Go. The news about Jesus was never intended to stay in a given place. Whether we're talking geographically or whether we're talking socially, it was never intended. This was not just, let's let everyone in Jerusalem know, and then the job is done. In fact, you'll see that one of the big problems that they had at the beginning of Christianity Jesus had said, begin in Jerusalem, then all Judea, and then Samaria, and then to the uttermost part. And they did Jerusalem, and they were doing Judea, and they felt really comfortable. Things were just really good right there. I mean, hey, everybody around, we filled Jerusalem with our doctrine, it says. This is great. No, that was not the point. The point was to start here. But from here... To go everywhere. So what did God do? Send a little persecution. Nothing like a little persecution to scatter Baptists all over the world. Just get them going. Just make it uncomfortable where they are. And all of a sudden, oh yeah, that's what I'm supposed to be doing. And they take off. Listen. Everyone around us needs Jesus. Everyone. When you go out from this building and you go into the community, I don't care if it's at your job, I don't care if it's at the grocery store, your neighborhood, wherever you are, people there need Jesus. 
You're going, are you just trying to fill up a church? No, I'm not trying to fill up a church. I'm trying to fill up a whole bunch of churches. I'm trying to fill up every home as a church. I want people to have what we know they need, and it is Jesus. Everyone around us needs Jesus. Let me give you a second thing. Everyone like us needs Jesus. Whatever you consider yourself, everybody like you needs Jesus. And we all have little names for us. I mean, we have little labels that we put on ourselves, you know. I love all the day. They, they, they ask you, who are you? And, and, and I seldom fit in one box. I figured that out. I'm kind of like a crossover box from here to there. It's kind of confusing. The, the only one that I'm sure of is white. That's the only one I know for sure. All the others get kind of complicated for me. Let me tell you something. Everybody that's just like me, all the bicultural people that I know need Jesus. They, they really do. And everyone that's like you needs Jesus. So they're around you, they're like you, but let me say also, everyone that's different from you needs Jesus. See, it's not just about everybody like you. It was all it was intended to be for everybody. So I can't, I can't just be satisfied with reaching everyone that's like me. Back in 1989, I think I got this one right, Mark. 1989, we had gotten kind of like a, a pre-census thing of this neighborhood. And they said this neighborhood that we live in was 33% white, 33% African American, 33% Hispanic, 1% other. And at that time, our church was only Spanish. And I said, if we reach everyone that speaks Spanish, we have only reached 33% of this neighborhood. That's not good enough. That's when we started English. Why? Because everyone that's different from us needs Jesus too. And it's not just everyone that's close by, like us and different from us. Everyone, I don't care how far away they are, they need Jesus. You know, one thing about our world today, it's, it, it's so big, so many people, but it seems so much smaller than it used to. Why? Because through the internet, through better travel, through all of these things, it just made the whole thing smaller. And guess what? That means there's a greater possibility of letting everyone know what Jesus did for them. And that's our job. That's what we are to do. It said, Jesus said, wait. But then he said, go. And third, he said, be my witnesses. Be my witnesses of what? We are God's first choice for letting everyone know the way to him. I remember I heard a, a story a long time ago, that, and it said Jesus, the day he ascended into heaven, he got up into heaven, and, and all the angels gave him this great big welcome back to heaven. We're so glad, you know, and they were talking among themselves and talking to him and saying, Jesus, you know, they didn't treat you very good down there. No, I got yeah, it. Was, it was kind of rough. But listen, uh, they, 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 they killed you, but you rose again. Uh, do they understand everything that you have done for them? No. Well, what plan do you have? Do you want us to go down? Do you want us to, to go tell? He says, no. All the, the people I left, my disciples, it's their job to let everyone know. And one angel goes, you mean like Peter? He's not very reliable, you know. He, he, you know he's kind of wishy-washy. Someday yes, someday no. Someday, you know, you're, God has told you this, and the next day get behind me, Satan. You know, that, that Peter, yeah. Thomas, you know, he doesn't always believe. He's not sure. About, 
Are, are, are you sure you want something so important left in the hands of people so imperfect as them? And just Jesus said, there, there is no plan B. They are the first choice. There is no plan B. Guess what? You and I are the Andrews, the Simon Peters, the Thomas. That's us. We may not feel like we're qualified. We may not feel like we got it all together. And when I get it all together, then I'll do something for God. No, no. God has always gone through and used, just used imperfect people that understood the great gift that he had to give them. Be my witnesses. We are to be witnesses how everyone else, how they can receive Jesus and all the benefits that come with him. See, I'm amazed when you just stop and think all the benefits that we have just knowing Jesus. Psalm says, says, do not forget all the benefits of knowing God. And you look at the New Testament and you just go through and you examine the benefits that we have. I feel so sad when I see people going through the crud that life throws at them. And they don't have Jesus. That doesn't make them bad. It just means they have no one to help them through the stuff that life is going to throw at them. We are to be witnesses how they can receive Jesus and all the benefits. We are to be witnesses of how they can live connected to Jesus. See, it's, it's that connection, that daily connection from him to us so that the life that he has can flow through us so that the fruit that he wants to bear can flow through us we are to be witnesses of that and we are to be witnesses of how they are to live that out in every area of life every area of life that's what we're for. That's what we are here for. Here is Jesus talking to this group, not only his 11, but a group of about 120. And he says, okay, guys, I'm going to give you the power. And then you are going to spread it. Let me tell you something. We have more people here today than we're in the upper room when the Holy Spirit came. We have more people sitting right here. And that 120 literally transformed the world. The Holy Spirit's here. The, the authority from God is here. It's just us as they were saying, okay, Lord, we waited. We're willing to go. We are willing to be the witnesses you want in this world. And I ask you to do me a favor. Go to the right-hand side of that sheet. And I want you around your table. There's a little paragraph to read there. And then there's some questions. And I want you all to talk about this. How can we do this? How can we work this out in everyday life? you got 20 minutes. Work on that together around your table today.